tonight we tonight's a little bit of a different night because we want to lay hands and anoint you afresh and anew. Amen. Um, who of you are sensing that there is a is a new dimension available and there's more available of God than in prior seasons? Okay, let me ask it again. Who of you are sensing that there's more of God and there's more in this season available than in prior seasons? Me too. So I want to just share literally just one or two scriptures and, um, and then I'm going to call you out and we're going to pray. And as I mentioned last week, one of the things that we have to take note is that the Holy Spirit is, I think one of the great misunderstandings about the Spirit of the Lord is that the Spirit of the Lord is actually a person. And because the Holy Spirit is a person, it can be vexed, it can be grieved, it can be quenched. And more importantly, the Holy Spirit is of you and the Holy Spirit is of me. But we can receive more of God. Come on, that's a good place to say amen. You can receive more of God. I want you to see just a scripture here in James chapter number 4 and verse number 5. James chapter number 4 and verse number 5. The Bible says in James chapter number 4 and verse number 5, it says, Or do you think that the scripture says in vain that the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously or jealously? Uh, James chapter 4 verse number 5, let me read that again. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously for us? In other words, Often we will say it is the Lord that is yearning for us, but truthfully speaking, it is the Spirit that is yearning for you. Can I say that again? It is the Holy Spirit that yearns for you. It is the Holy Spirit that wants to take more of a control in our life, and it's more of a surrender in our own lives, but it is the Spirit that is the Lord. And where the Lord is, there is the Spirit. Everybody with me? And so it's the Holy Spirit that yearns for more of you and the Holy Spirit that yearns for more of me. The Holy Spirit is with us and He lives inside of us and you and I are a temple of the Most High God. This you find in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 18, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 and we are carriers of God. And I wanted to say tonight just one or two thoughts with that, that when Jesus Christ came to the planet, and the reason why I just want to share one or two thoughts with you before we start, start to lay hands is just to lay an emphasis of why we're doing what we are doing, is Jesus came with a kingdom message. He came with an infiltration message. He came to take over that that was belonging to His Father. In other words, the Son came not to just create a religion, or well, He didn't come to create a religion at all. He came with a message. It's the kingdom. And as you and I are seated here tonight and everybody online, we are kingdom citizens of a kingdom message of a spirit that wants to infiltrate the world. Come on, are you okay? And the more you carry of the Holy Spirit, the more this world and your world is infiltrated by His world. That's why the Bible says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Please note, it doesn't say let Christianity come. It says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done as it is in heaven. Let it be so on earth. Now the connector between heaven and earth is the Holy Spirit. God the Father is in heaven. God the Son is seated at the right hand of the Father. And with us, the God on the earth is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit is with us. Thank be to God, He can never leave us. Thank be to God, He can never forsake us. He's a permanent indweller. The word temple is such a beautiful word. The word temple is a Greek word, nohas, and it means one that is beautifully enshrined from the inside out. That's who you are. God enshrined you or beautified you from the inside out, not from the outside in. Though I think both is important. But the Lord has beautified you from the inside out. Come on guys, are you okay? But one of the things that I've always wanted to, even before I, I came here tonight, I was thinking I'll tell you just one or two things on it. One, when I started ministry, one of the things that I wanted to know always about God is this. What do you want? How do you want it? And when do you want it? Because if I know what He wants and how He wants it and when He wants it, I can be obedient to His commandments. Are you there? Because to understand the will of God is the first dimension. 
To understand the ways of God is the second dimension. To understand the methods of God and the timing of God is the third dimension. And then the, to act upon that is the fourth dimension. We have to understand all and that is where we have the great opportunity to walk with God. Amen. Moses said this, he said, Lord, show me your ways, don't show me your will. Why did Moses say, show me your ways? Because he understood, if he understood the ways of God, the will of God will always be seen. Come on, church, are you, are you there? When you understand the ways, the how does God want to do it, then the will of the Lord is easily discerned. The will of the Lord is established by the word of the Lord. The ways of the Lord is established by relationship with the Lord. Too much? Let me say it again. The will of the Lord is established by the word of the Lord. The ways of the Lord is established with a relationship with God. I, when I know the Lord, it is my, my responsibility after I've known the Lord to understand how He wants, what He wants. Are you there? And so as we... We need to know if we look at the life of Jesus, just simple thoughts here tonight. Jesus didn't leave us helpless. He gave us the Holy Spirit. When He left this world, He, he sat His disciples down. And as He sat His disciples down, He said to them, I will send you another helper. And He will be your comforter. And He will be your leader. And He will be your helper. And He will be your guide. The Holy Spirit remains our guide. He remains our helper. And He remains our leader. Are you there? The places He leads us to is not often comfortable. I'll quote one scripture for you in John 14, 6, where Jesus says, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. Please note that. Jesus could have used two words. He could have used the word alos or the word heteros. The word alos means one of the very same kind, or the word heteros, one of a different kind. Now, what I just want us to take note of tonight, and it's, I'm going to teach very briefly because we want to lay hands, is that if Jesus would have used the word heteros, He would have sent somebody completely different. But what He did, He sent alos, He sent one that is just like Him. Are you there? So when the Holy Spirit instructs us, it is as if Jesus is speaking to us. Because the Holy Spirit cannot speak on His own. He has to bring to remembrance Jesus' words. So the Father represents us, brings us to Jesus. Jesus brings us to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit again brings us to Jesus. And Jesus brings us right back to the Father. Are you there? You see the Trinity in operation? Without the Spirit of the Lord, there isn't creative power. Let me say that again. Without the Spirit of the Lord, creative power is void. With the Spirit of God, all things become possible. How do I know? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the deep, and the deep was formless and void, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering, and the Son needed to do the speaking, and the Spirit of the Lord did the creating what the Son was saying. You see the cooperation? Come on, are you there? So as you are seated here tonight, I want you just to understand that Jesus gave you the Holy Spirit. Now, with that in mind, let me quickly just, I just need to jump to the second scripture just for um, clarity's sake. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit has a responsibility to teach us the word of the Lord. You and I have the responsibility to read the word. The Holy Spirit has the responsibility to teach you the word. Come on, say amen. Okay. Now when you have the Holy Spirit in your life, let me quickly go to one more scripture here. Um, I must start teaching because then I just the scripture starts to run in my head um, and in my heart. 16.33 These things I have spoken to you uh, no, it's verse, where are you? Verse 15, 26. There we go. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me. I want you to see something there. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. And He comes to you because of the basis of Jesus. 
Come on, guys. Are you okay? And the reason why you want more of the Holy Spirit in your life is because you want to demonstrate more of the kingdom of God through your life. Come on, can I have anybody to say amen tonight? Okay. Again, I'll say, the reason why you want more of God in your life is because you want to demonstrate more of God through your life. And one of the things that we need to know in this hour is that God does want to do more with our lives. But I don't think it is a more through more sweat. I think it's a more through surrender. David understood something about the Holy Spirit and he's quite opposite for me than Samson. And I'll use the two as a quick example and then we're going to pray. Is that it? Is your hearts ready? Okay. David made a mistake in his life and because he made a mistake, the Spirit of the Lord didn't lift from his life, but David was afraid that the Spirit of the Lord would leave him. And therefore you get Psalm 51 where, this, where David, the psalmist, cries out and he says, Lord, never take your Spirit away from me. Are you with me? He's, he's pleading with the Lord. Lord, never remove your spirit away from me. Never, even though David was a man of war, he understood something about the spirit. He said, Lord, never remove your spirit away from me. Never, never, never. He, he yearned for the Lord. He learned something about the spirit of the Lord. Samson on the other side, the spirit of the Lord or the anointing lifted from Samson and Samson knew it not. That tells me he didn't have a relationship with the anointing. Are you with me? The anointing is not a dove, it's not the oil, it's not all of the above. These are symbols. The anointing is a person. And he can be transferred. And that's what we want to do tonight. Are you there? In other words, all of us here carry a measure of God with us. Come on, you, are you unsure? All of you that are here are carrying a measure of God with you. The measure that you carry is according to the call and the assignment that you've received from God. But more than that, as you've walked with God, you've gathered oil in private. Come on. I cannot give you my history with the Lord, but the Lord can impart to you what He wants to impart to you, to empower you to do what you need to do for the Lord. Together we are the church and together we have a call to live out the kingdom message. Come on guys, are you okay? And so tonight what we want to do is we want to pray for you very simply. And I want to trust God that as the Lord pray, as, as we pray for you and as the Lord touches you, that each and every one of you will receive a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. That you would be a people, because it's interesting for me, and I'll just quote the, the book of Acts just finally, that the disciples get a very clear instruction from Jesus in Acts chapter number one, verse number eight. The, the instruction is this, do nothing, stay here in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. I like what a, one of the authors says, it says, it says, do nothing until the Holy Spirit puts you on like a glove, wait. And then we see the disciples waiting in the upper room. It's an interesting thing. We see the disciples waiting in the upper room. And there's so much to this. I, 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 there's, there's richness in the scripture. We see the disciples waiting in the upper room. And then we see the Spirit of the Lord descending as a fire and lighting upon each and every one of them. Right? What did John the Baptist say when he saw Jesus the first time? There is the one that will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then it is not that there was such a ruckus in the upper room that people came from everywhere to see what was going on. There was a movement. I'll have to teach that on another night, otherwise I'll be stuck there for about an hour. There was a movement that happened in the, other, in the upper room that, that day. And when that movement happened, the people knew something spiritual happened. The Spirit of the Lord came back to the earth. When was the Lord recalled? He was recalled of Adam. When was He sent? When the Lord sent Him. Now you and I have the high call to live with God. Oh, come on, hallelujah. We have the high call to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
We have a high call to walk in the supernatural. We have a high call to cast out devils, to raise the sick, or raise the dead, to heal the sick. We have a high call. Sometimes in charismatic circles, we take speaking in tongues as just ordinary. No, it's a high thing. It's a high call. You have the special privilege to be in divine communication of God and the enemy does not understand what you're saying. Neither do you. You are praying the will of God. Come on, are you there? And so I want us to pray tonight and as you come out tonight, this is, this is the determining factor. May your hunger reset you. And may your hunger for the Lord catapult you to the next dimension. Come on, are you okay? It is the hungry hearts that never gets walked by. Come on, guys. Hunger. Hunger. You want something, you have to be hungry for it. In the spiritual and the natural is two opposites. In the natural, if you're hungry, you eat, you're satisfied. In the spiritual, when you're hungry and you eat, you want more. You can test it. If you start to pray in the Spirit tomorrow, 10 minutes a day, I promise you, you want more. You start to have the discipline of reading your Bible, you will want more. You start to see God functioning in certain signs, wonders and miracles, you would want more. Why? Hunger births hunger. Are you there? So this is my prayer tonight. As you come out and as we lay hands on you, say, with your, with, say to yourself that in this night, Lord, take me to a next dimension. Lord, shift me to a next place. Lord, move me higher. Lord, infiltrate my life. It's interesting for me, last thought, that the disciples, once the Spirit of the Lord came, they never again needed to cast lots to understand what the will of God is. They say, the Holy Spirit and us. Oh, I love that in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit and us. So time and time again, they say the Holy Spirit and us thought it good. Are you guys okay? May you know that you have been baptized in Christ. That means you've been woven together with Christ. And because you are in Christ, you have the right to have more of God in your life. And so I want to encourage you to jump out of your seats tonight and say, here am I, I want more of the Lord. I want to, and then we're going to come around, we're going to pray for you, that's simple. And um, I want us as pastors to come and to be ready and um, to lay hands on you. And so if you are here tonight, this is a different type of service. This morning I said this will be an impartation service, an anointing service, laying on hands. And let's just trust the Holy Spirit and see where we go. Amen. Is that okay? I want you to jump out of your seats and come to the front. And um, as the pastors can join me. Can I ask the volunteers as well? If you can just uh, help us to put everybody in two rows. La broche to be the canal. the worship team to come. La broche to be in the bed. La broche to be in the Ask everybody in the first row just to take two steps forward. Two steps forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus. La brosta caliandro bocoro bondere be andre. Thank you, Jesus. La bronda de be kere be andro bocoro be andre. Come on, everybody. Won't you just lift your hands to the Lord? Won't you just lift your hands? Won't you just lift your hands? Thank you, Father. Father, we want to pray tonight. Before we start to lay hands, we're going to start that song. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, tonight for every single person that is here. We thank you, Lord, that you fill them afresh and anew. Father, I want to pray that in this night for a fresh anointing. Lord, we want to trust you tonight. Lord, that you fill your people afresh and anew with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, even as we apply holy oil tonight or... Lord, the oil of the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that people can shift to a next dimension. And Father, I want to pray in this night, Lord Jesus, we lay hands. Father, if there's sickness, that sickness will go. Lord, we thank you. Lord, if there's any form of sickness, that it will leave their bodies in this night in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father, we thank you for a fresh anointing and a fresh touch in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Pastor, let's just start with this side. Thank you, Jesus. Just go down the line. Just go down the line. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Oh, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free. And my shame oh, is undone. Your presence, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and
Arthritis, any form of arthritis, lupus, rheumatoid, uh, any form of arthritis. I see arthritis the whole time in the spirit, and I want to pray for that sickness. It has to leave. Come on, amen. Do you believe that? Arthritis is not from God. Not one of his bones were broken. I'll say it again. Not one of his bones were broken. We do not need our bones to be on fire by any sickness or disease. Come on, do you believe? Come on, church, do you believe? Not one of his bones were broken. We will not tolerate this sickness. Would you come, guys? Why don't you stretch out your hands, church? Can you feel the Holy Spirit? The Lord doesn't like this. We don't need to settle for infirmity. Father, I want to pray tonight. The arthritis, whatever this is, Lord, and whatever form it is, Lord, that in this time, that this sickness will disappear and dissipate out of these bodies in the precious name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that in this time we can take authority over this sickness. We can take authority over this disease. And Father, this thing has got a name because it has a name. This name must bow. And it must bow under the name of Jesus the Christ. Father, I thank you for healing oil tonight to come over their bodies from the tippy top of their heads to the soles of their feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that the pain will dry up at the touch of our hands. Father, I pray by the touch of our hands, Lord, that all form of sickness will disappear in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Come on, stretch out your hands of me, church, please. Father, I thank you for a fresh touch. I pine of writers in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak your healing over this body, Lord, in this night, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray, come against of the writers in this body, in Jesus' mighty name. I speak healing, Father, over this body, in Jesus' name. Lord, we declare that the time of arthritis has come to an end. We thank you, Jesus, that we break the power of arthritis over this body in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you that in this night we break the power of arthritis in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, that this sickness and this disease will leave this body in this night in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Father, I speak peace over this bone. Peace over this bone. Peace over this body. In the name of Jesus, of the righteous will go. La broche de clé and the of the righteous will go. Of the righteous will go. Of the righteous will go. The Lord will make a way for you. La bronda rava katre be and the beshte be and the rava korobon de be and the be and the sa broche de ketri and the rava korobon de. Father, touch them. Touch these bodies, Lord. La broche de katle and the rava korobon de just be done. Can I ask the churches to pray in the spirit of me? I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for a fresh encounter fresh encounter for this daughter Lord for the Lord is making a way for you for the Lord is making a way for you Father I pray in this night Lord that she will know that you have made a way in Jesus mighty name that all forms of disease will go in this night in the mighty name of Jesus but Father I call out this gift that is inside of her Lord I call it back into flame back into fire back into purpose back in the mighty name of Christ Jesus Lord in this night Lord I call again that there is that that you have said over her in the mighty name of Christ Jesus father thank you that when people walk out you do not you remain and you stay and 
Father, so I pray in this night, Lord, even as was was with Mary, so it will be with you, says the Lord, that my word will stay with you, and my word will not change concerning you. Men may walk out, people may walk out, but my word will stay the same. It will never change, will never change, will never change. Peace to you in this night. Church, pray, guys. Pray, pray, pray. We are, we are partakers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, la bronda la bakat le bereshte ke terbi endre. Just hear it. Come on, let just, let just, let just worship the Lord. Let's sing that song. Beautiful.
want to pray for something very, very specific. And I come on stage because I believe there's people that's going to be online. It's going to be like this as well. Many years ago, I prayed for a specific condition in a specific woman. And whenever I would pray for this person, the sickness will lift off their bodies. Sometimes it will be away a week, sometimes 10 days. Sometimes after extensive prayer, it will stay away for two weeks. I think the longest that I can recall is just short than a month. But ever so often, after we have prayed, the sickness will come back again. And I didn't understand it. How is this possible that this sickness can come back? And after the person went to be of the Lord, one day I was in prayer. And as I was in prayer, the Lord took me back to those moments that I prayed very specifically for this, this person. And the Lord showed me words running on their bones. And I, say, I said, Lord, what am I, what am I seeing? What is these words running on these bones? And the Lord quoted a scripture to me. He said, whoever sins you retain is retained. Whoever sins you forgive is forgiven. And then the Lord started to explain to me in the season after that, how much power the spoken word of a Christian has over another Christian. Are you, are you a friend? Because your words have got life and death in them. And by the fruit thereof, you will eat. And I feel tonight as we're standing here, there are words spoken against people. And the Lord wants to break the words down. And the reason why I know there is words spoken is because for no peculiar reason, attack comes. Come on, are you there? I want you to understand not everything is from the devil. I'm not saying everything is now from a Christian. That's also not what I'm saying. I'm saying we are responsible for what we say. Are you guys okay? Because it cannot be that Satan is that powerful. Ephesians 6.13 tells us he attacks in a day while God's mercy is new every day. That means he cannot be in control. It's the spirit that leads our lives. But the reason why I'm here this evening and why I'm standing here looking at all our, all our online monitors, I want to break these words out over your life. I want to break them off because they don't belong to you. And whatever has been said over your life, whatever has been discussed, we can agree together tonight as a body assembly. Say, Lord, these words go in this night in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, we cast them down to the ground to have no effect. Are you there? Are you okay? Are you there? I do on a, on, a, on a weekly basis. I And as often as the Holy Spirit would remind me, I cast down words. Because there's power in words. And as a Christian, you don't need to be popular to be effective. But you have to understand, people will speak against you. And we have a responsibility to break those words down. Amen? This, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. You understand the explanation? If you feel like that, lift your hands to the Lord. If you feel like that online tonight, lift your hands to God. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to break these words. They have got no effect. And you don't need to live under it. You don't need to live under it. You don't need to live because of it. Father, in this night, thank you that your thoughts are good thoughts towards us. That your word out over our life is life. Father, thank you that as the author of life, you have voted in on our lives life. You have not quoted death over us. You have not quoted an ill report over our lives. For your word declares in, in Hebrews 11, verse number 1, by faith we can expect a good report. And Father, thank you that in this night we cancel every word spoken. Lord, in evil, in just, Lord, by omission, by commission, Lord, whatever words were spoken of things that were just said, Lord, whether by reason or no reason, whether by intent or no intent, Father, this night we break those words in the mighty name of Jesus. We break the words of the evil one.
through people in Jesus mighty name father we understand that our war is not against flesh and blood we understand that we're not up against flesh we're up against spirits and father we thank you that in this night that the highest spirit the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and it's because of that reason and it's because of that reason and it's because of that reason God that we pray boldly tonight father that we can break off every word of condemnation every word of death Lord every word of suspicion every word of gossip every word of slander every word of character assassination every word of a lack of hope a lack of tomorrow a despair an anxiety a fear a depression in the mighty name of Jesus the father we speak over your people Lord refresh rivers of life we speak of your people Lord that they will live and they will prosper they will be the head and not the tail they'll be above and not beneath in their coming and in their going they shall be blessed Lord I pray over them and I speak your word over them they are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus they will work in all situation and every situation and every circumstance shall work together for their good as they are called by the Lord according to his purpose this I pray and this we agree on in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray and all God's people give Jesus a massive shout of praise there we are us as we stand I want you to lift your hands receive the word of the Lord for you that's why the Lord took me here Psalm 27 it's a different night it's okay the Lord is my light receive that of your life the Lord is that my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I have desired, verse number four. One thing I've desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Now listen to our hearts cry to the Lord. Teach me a way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, thank you that we can decree this over people's lives. Now I instruct you, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and He shall strengthen your heart. But I say, wait upon the Lord father we thank you as we lift our hands tonight as a church Lord, that we can say our hearts are encouraged as we wait upon the Lord father thank you that we can say tonight that our hearts is strengthened because we wait upon the Lord in Jesus mighty name if you agree of that prayer say amen and amen come on let's give Jesus a praise offering come on Come on, they just lift it. Come on, ten more seconds, why don't you just lift the Lord? Just lift him with praise, just a praise offering. your name Lord we bless your name we bless your name Lord we bless your name you are healer you are our redeemer we bless your name God we bless your name we bless your name Lord la bronde de beta la bonda la bacata la bonda la bacata la biandre
feel to say to you before we, we move on, I feel to say to you that there's certain patterns that will cease tonight. will not continue. You'll go home, you'll wake up, it will be gone. Receive that word tonight. I just feel for many of you here that there's, there's patterns that will cease. Yes, Lord. There's patterns that will cease. As you go home, as you wake up, it will be gone. It will not be there anymore. Yes, Lord. There's patterns that will cease, says the Lord. You'll go home, you'll wake up, they'll be gone. They won't be there anymore. Father, we thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God is so good. Can we just give him ten, just 10 seconds of praise again? Man. Well, it's time to honor the Lord of our giving tonight. And um, as we honor the Lord of our giving, what a time to be on the planet. Amen. What a time to be alive. What a time to be a part of what God is doing on the earth. I, there's a call of God in this hour. I don't know if you sense it, but there's a call for to come deeper with the Lord. It's unlike any other hour. I don't think I've ever experienced the urgency of God like now. Remember the, spirit, the scripture that I quote, that it is the spirit that yearns for you. Amen. I want to pray for every single person that gives unto the Lord tonight. And uh, as you give unto the Lord, I, I want to pray over you tonight that you will know that as we tithe, as we give to God, that it is always pressed down, shaken together and running back into us. And I also want to say, I agree with what Pastor Stephen said this morning, that you will walk in divine freedom financially. Amen. That you lack no good thing. Come on, say amen. amen. That you lack no good thing. Jesus Christ said this, Father, deliver us from evil. Evil is all things that has got poverty and pain in it. Let the Lord deliver us all and let nobody walk in any form of poverty and pain. Come on. Are you there? It's not God's design for us. So Father, I want to pray tonight for your people. Thank you, Lord, for Empower Church. Lord, thank you for Empower Church, Pretoria, Durban, Cape Town. And Father, I pray in this night, Lord, as we give unto you, Father, thank you that poverty and pain, it has got nothing to do with us. It's not part of our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I pray over your people tonight, rivers of refreshing streams of life to come over them, Lord, that they will know that rivers of life is theirs in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray that there will never be a stream that will run dry in their lives. Lord, they will never be beggars. The righteous does not beg for bread. And Father, I pray for them that in this night that a fresh boldness will come upon them as they give unto you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen.